Yes, Tuba, you are trying to say something? Yes, I ask him. Okay. Yes, she's here. Sarah has entered in the class. She just got in. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> All right. So uh, a new class of drug by name of anti-arithmetic drugs we are going to study. Uh, this class of drug will take approximately four days to finish. I'll try to squeeze it and try to finish it in three days, but it should technically take like four days. Okay, so it means four lectures. All right. So anti-arithmetic drugs, as the name indicates, anti-arithmetic. So if you even break up this word, arithmetic. So this is a rhythm, right? So if you even concentrate on the word itself, you'll get to know that um, it is something fixing the rhythm which went wrong, right? So a rhythm was already there, it went wrong, and now we are going to give the drugs which are going to fix the, the, the rhythm, all right? Okay, so... Uh, before uh, digging into the topic of drugs, names of drugs, and et cetera, et cetera, I will first of all introduce to you how is the normal cardiac rhythm, how exactly it can get affected, what, what, what can be the causes, what will be the symptoms. And then in the upcoming lectures, we are going to talk about the drug. Okay, so today's lecture is more focused towards the introduction of introduction to the cardiac rhythms right how exactly they look like how exactly they are like all right so whenever you visit to a hospital especially a person who is in ccu so you will actually see um, a monitor placed inside the room and it will have this kind of waves going on and every nurse and every doctor whenever they'll visit to the room. So uh, they will actually, you know, focus towards the monitor to know how exactly the person is uh, feeling like, all right? Okay. Uh, what went wrong here? Wait a minute. I don't know what went wrong here. Wait a minute, everybody, wait. All right, okay. So the thing is, is that uh, every doctor will uh, look into it. So we will try to learn how exactly, uh, you know, these waves, these rhythms actually talk. All right. How exactly they communicate to us that the person is feeling well or not. Okay. So first of all, when we talk about the cardiac rhythm, right? So we automatically have this uh, you know an idea that when we are talking about the cardiac rhythm so there has to be something generating the rhythms right and when we talk about generating of the rhythm so definitely we have to discuss conduction system which is there in our heart so you see this is the sinoatrial node all right so here an electrical signal would be produced it will go to the av node and here there will be a kind of a delay of um, you know, 0 0.1 second. And later on, uh, uh, after passing towards the bundle of his, the electrical impulses will be generated throughout the Perkin G fibers. And later on, uh, you know, the entire contractility and every mechanism will start to happen, right? Okay. So, uh, how exactly we are going to interpret the contractility and everything we are going to do that by the help of EKG wave or ECG wave right okay so the thing is I, I even discussed this thing in the last lecture that there's a wave by name of PQRST wave right okay 
So this P wave is actually depolarization of atria in response to SA note triggering. It's very important that you note here that this P wave is actually indicating the depolarization, okay? And when we talk about repolarization, so repolarization is more towards bringing the things back into its normal shape or bringing it back to its original form, right? Okay, so then we have the Q, uh, Q part and we usually call this QRS complex. It's actually called QRS complex, okay? This is a P wave, this is a T wave, and this is QRS complex, okay? So this PR interval here, okay, you see, the, it got depolarized. I told you that there is a delay of 0 0.1 second and you see the atria, since they have contracted now, they are, uh, you know, in a state where they are refilling, okay? They are refilling. So this is PR interval is about delay of AV node to allow filling of the ventricles, right? Okay. Then we have QRS complex. So it, in, in, it indicates depolarization of ventricles, triggers main pumping actions, right? Okay. Uh, then we have ST segment. So ST segment is actually talking about the beginning of ventricles repolarization. Okay, and it should be flat, right? Uh, T wave is ventricular repolarization. If you look at this uh, flow chart with deep detail, so you will see that it's depolarization it's depolarization, it's repolarization, and here it's also repolarization. So if you want to memorize it right now, so you can easily memorize that before, at, before beginning of the T wave, after ending the S wave, we will talk, start talking about repolarization. And before that, we will only talk about depolarization, right? So you see here, depolarizing of atria, depolarizing of ventricle, and then ventricular repolarization. Maybe a question will come up in your mind, that was Faiza, where is atrial uh, repolarization, right? So my answer to that would be, it could be somewhere about uh, QRS wave, right? Um, so maybe it's not mentioned there, right? Uh, it's not visible there, because Maybe it's happening at the same time when we have QRS wave, and that's how they look like, right? Okay, so this is the diagram which I've already, uh, uh, I already showed to you in my last lecture. So I'm not going to talk more about it because I've already talked. Okay, so one simulation I tried to add that you see atria gets filled, ventricles get filled, and then they are relaxing, right? So that is making PQRST wave. Then is cardiac action potential. Because when we are talking about arrhythmias, and I will talk to you about the classes of arrhythmic drugs. So I will talk to you about sodium channel blockers, calcium channel blockers, and stuff like that. So you should know that which phase I'm going to target. So uh, I know we have already talked about this before, but now I want you to look at this uh, peak with a different perspective. Right now, I want you to notice that where is phase zero? Where is phase one? Where is phase two? And where is phase three? And then you, are, you should see here that how much is the refractory period? right? How much is the distance between these? Okay. So starting at, uh, starting the entire process, first of all, it's the resting membrane potential, which is minus 90 millivolts. Um, it raises and hits threshold value, which is minus 55 millivolts. Sodium channel triggers, they get opened up and all of a sudden, sodium and calcium starts to increase within the Cell, all right, positivity starts to increase 
and because of which this is depolarization, right? Then phase one, at phase one, sodium channel closes, right? But potassium influx is still there, right? Okay. Uh, at this moment, potassium starts to leave the cell and because of the reason, some positive charges are leaving, some are getting inside. So because of this reason, we don't have a flat uh, decline, all right? We don't have a steep decline. We have a, a curve which is steadily getting declined, all right? So this calcium, and why we have a steady curve, why it's uh, getting decreased slowly and gradually because of the reason that calcium is getting in flux and potassium is getting out of the cell, okay? So both of the charges are uh, being, you know, the one is getting inside, other is getting outside. So positivity is maintained, all right, within the cell. But after reaching plus 30 millivolts, all right, so the calcium channels will also, you know, close. And uh, however, potassium will keep on getting outside, all right? And that's why we will have rapid repolarization. And then it will hit the resting potential. And then if you remember, we talked about uh, the entire mechanism in the, in the last semester, how it will get back to its resting membrane potential and all that, I'm not going to talk about it. Wow, what am I doing today? Wait. All right. <clears throat> All right, so types of arrhythmias. So before targeting on the types, how exactly arrhythmias are happening? They're obviously happening because of two reasons. Either there's improper impulse generation, all right? It means your pacemaker is not working effectively. What is pacemaker? Pacemaker is the SA node, right? So your body's, your heart's pacemaker is not working effectively or impulse conduction is being messed up, right? Okay, so the types of arrhythmia is, uh, you know, bradycardia, tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, atrial flutter, and fibrillation. We'll talk about it more in my coming, uh, in my upcoming lecture, so don't worry if you don't know any of these, okay? All right, then we have causes of arrhythmias. You see, like I said a couple of minutes ago, that it can be due to two reasons, okay? Either the automaticity could be uh, messed up or the impulse conduction could be messed up, okay? So the thing is, uh, sinus node, sinus tachycardia and bradycardia, this is one aspect of it. So it can be due to increased vagal activity uh, can impair nodal pacemaker cells by elevating potassium conductance, leading to hyperpolarization, increased sympathetic activity, increases the rate of phase four depolarization. Intrinsic disease can produce faulty pacemaker. Wait. Okay. So we were talking about this thing, that intrinsic disease can produce faulty pacemaker activity, which is sick sinus syndrome, okay? So what is that? You see, sick sinus, uh, sick sinus syndrome <laughs> is actually like this, okay? So it is basically an inability of heart's natural pacemaker, which is sinus nodes, to create a heart rate that's appropriate for body's need, okay? So it causes irregular heart rhythms, arrhythmias. It is also known as sinus node dysfunction or sinus node disease, all right? Okay. All right. So the next thing is ectopic foci. Uh, uh, so these can also be the reasons, okay? Uh, because of which we can have uh, arrhythmias. So these are the areas within the conductance, uh, conduction system that may, in the disease state, develop high rates of intrinsic activity and function as pacemaker. Now, what is that? Let's talk about it. You see this. 
so this is the ectopic foci all right so this is you can say it's an excitable group of cells uh, that causes a premature heartbeat all right so uh, you know it will mess up the entire thing so this excitable group of cells will actually start to behave like a pacemaker although this uh, san is already there um, triggering the conduction so obviously the overall result will be messed up right oh uh, wait a minute <clears throat> So, uh, triggered automaticity results from delayed optoparalyzation that reach threshold and are incapable of initiating an impulse. You see, uh, this can also be due to electrolyte imbalance. Okay, it's not written in the slide. I want you all to please write it uh, somewhere with you that cardiac arrhythmias can also be due to uh, you know electrolyte imbalance in the body. Okay, so the thing is. The second state is abnormal impulse conduction in conduction pathway. So there are two aspects that heart blocks may produce bradyarrhythmias or re-entry circus conduction um, may produce tachyarrhythmias. All right. So these are the two causes of arrhythmias. All right. So how would we know that a person is suffering from cardiac arrhythmia? So the person will develop a chest pain or discomfort. There will be a shortness of breath, lightheadedness, dizziness, fluttering in the chest, racing heartbeat, low heartbeat, any of these can happen, right? We just read about pericardia and tachycardia. Fainting or near fainting, a kind of a state can be there. So what are the goals? Wait, I've got a message. Wait a minute. Which one are you saying? Which one are you saying? This one? Did you say this one? Intrinsic disease can produce faulty uh, pacemaker activity. I okay wait i've just got a message yes okay all right so you see in uh, intrinsic activity when we are talking about sex sinus syndrome okay so it will actually produce uh you know rhythms like these which are messed up okay and this is actually because of the reason that uh you know the body is not able the heart is not able to generate the impulses uh, the rhythms as it should be okay so uh, then we will say that the sinuses are not working properly okay so intrinsic means within right so this is a syndrome which is happening within the pacemaker okay so this is uh, you know the heart's inability to function properly okay so this is an intrinsic thing am i clear to you sana Then I'm waiting for your response so I can move on. Okay, good. All right, so intrinsic is inside, within the body, and extrinsic is outside, okay? All right, so goals of the therapy. Goals of the therapy, if you say talk in one word, so the one word would be to, uh, you know, maintain the rhythm properly, all right? So how we are going to do that? So our aim, uh, the goal of the therapy actually aims to restore normal pacemaker activity and modify impaired conduction that leads to arrhythmias, all right? So therapeutic effects are achieved by sodium or calcium channel blockage, uh, prolongation of effective refractory period, refractory period, which we just talked about. In my upcoming classes, I will talk about five different classes of these drugs, and I will tell you guys that how and when each of these, you know, classes are there how we treat the cases and all okay all right so a blockage of sympathetic effects on the heart many arrhythmic drugs affect depolarized tissue to a greater extent than they affect in a normal uh, that affect normal polarized tissue 
uh, okay everybody that is it for today okay inshallah in my upcoming classes i will talk to you in more detail about 